No matter how bizarre Velma is as a show, it's not quite as unusual as the innate compulsion to defend it. Because most people, no matter what your opinion is, agree that Velma is absolutely terrible, coming in at 6% on Rotten Tomatoes, with it being so terrible that people started to think that it was terrible deliberately in order to make them look bad. But there are some bitter people out there that don't really care about entertainment, they care about the ideas behind it who are just desperate to defend Velma, because Velma is the culmination of everything they've ever wanted to create. So they just can't resist diving in and using themselves as human shield against the critics. The problem is, when something's this awful, what kind of tactics can you even use to defend it? And that is how you end up with articles like this one from CBR. How Velma's terrible reviews may actually end up saving the show. Oh yeah, all those terrible reviews, don't you know? They actually seem to have helped the show's popularity. We don't have any evidence for that, we're just going to say it as if it's fact. In fact, the only defense CBR seem to be able to make is that Velma isn't literally the worst show ever made. It's just mediocre. And I suppose if you haven't watched any entertainment, which is more than a year old, you'd probably believe that, as the standard has certainly dropped in recent times. But apparently the negative response is hyperbolic, even though viewers haven't rushed to defend the show, which most people would take as a sign that the negative response was actually accurate and not hyperbolic. But that's really CBR's main point, because they keep repeating that point, this is an entirely different article, and yet still goes on to talk about a tough uphill battle against bad faith critiques. And I can only assume they're talking about reviews like mine. How do you think it's bad faith? How do you think it's hyperbolic? I put clips in, do you think I'm photoshopping them? I just take clips from the show, put it in a video, and allow you to make your own mind up alongside my opinion of what I think it is. Please enlighten me on how that could possibly be bad faith or hyperbolic. And in any situation like this, the question I like to ask is, why? Why are you coming after the people giving negative reviews of the show? At the end of the day, that's just their opinion. If I don't like Velma, why is that impacting you? You could come out and tell us how great Velma really is. Put your own clips out and go, isn't this amazing? Look at the quality of the script. And yet you don't. The only people you keep coming after are the negative reviewers. And so why are you coming out with articles saying that actually all these negative reviews of the show are really helping it succeed? Audiences will likely be inspired to see for themselves if Velma is really as bad as the reviewers say. If left alone, Velma would likely have faded into obscurity, but the large amount of negative attention has given it a new life. I mean, the tactic here is obvious, isn't it? They're telling you to shut up. CBR really want people to stop saying how bad the show is. They want to stop talking about it. They want you to leave it alone so it can just exist and pass on its message to everybody else. And the way they're choosing to do that is by guilt tripping people, by trying to embarrass them, by trying to insinuate that all of those videos are actually counterproductive, by making them, you're helping the show and you wouldn't want to help this, would you? You wouldn't want to help something which is obviously giving such a horrific message to people. What it is, is the tried and tested method of shame and embarrassment. Oh, you're talking about how bad the show is, don't you know you're actually helping it and working against your own morals? Now this is obvious nonsense. CBR has already tried to say that, oh, actually, it's incredibly popular because loads of people are talking about it. Parrot Analytics say it's incredibly in demand. They forget to mention that Parrot Analytics is actually talking about all the people who are taking the piss out of how terrible the show is. But we're going to try and use that to embarrass the same people which are talking about it. And even CBR doesn't actually believe what they're saying. They don't believe that someone is saying how terrible something is will actually make it more popular, otherwise they'd be able to come up with reasons why. Because the best they can say is, there's a chance that some viewers will check out Velma due to how many people hate it, and realize it isn't as bad as it's meant to be. Viewers with rock bottom expectations may actually make the show seem better in contrast. Even CBR think that if you go in expecting the worst show ever made and find out, oh, it's only the third worst show ever made, then somehow that's actually a bonus. Forgetting the fact that unless it's actually good and people like it, then it really doesn't make a difference where it's ranked relatively in the bottom of the awfulness scale. The whole idea of hate reviewing somehow helping a show has always been nonsense. All publicity is good publicity has never made any sense. It only actually helps if there's an alternative perspective, but when it comes to something of the lack of quality of Velma, there is no alternative perspective. People on both sides despise it. That's where the theories came from that it was deliberately bad in the first place. Because there was no alternative opinion, there were no people left to defend the show. This is just an honor which CBR have decided to take up off their own backs. And that's all this hate watching is actually helping the show topic really is. It's an attempt to make people shut up, to silence them, to stop them pointing out what is going on in entertainment. It's meant to weaken your point, to do so by shame and embarrassment, to make you feel as if you're working against your own ambitions. 
But my point is, I don't really care. As far as I'm concerned, you can give Velma a second series. I want a second series of She-Hulk. Just keep making it. I would love to see your piles of money burn. You can throw as much money down the drain as you want. I don't need Disney to make good content. I don't care if Hollywood doesn't make another good movie for the rest of its life. I haven't really liked Hollywood movies in many, many years at this point. There's still plenty of other places in the world making TV series, making quality entertainment. So even if CBR's argument held water, and it doesn't, it's still not going to have any impact on me. But we go back to the why. Why does CBR want people to shut up? Why are they using the shame and humiliation to stop people giving negative critiques, to stop people pointing out exactly what this show is doing? Why do they want you to just leave it alone so it can pass on its message in peace? The answer is simple. They believe the message. They actually believe in Valma. They agree with what it's saying. They want Valma to sit there on its own without critique, without sunlight being the great disinfectant that it is in order to spread their message. Because the most damaging thing that you can do to a show like Valma is to expose it for what it is, to show people exactly what is going on. Because it's so awful, no one else is going to watch it. Because can you imagine what would happen if people didn't talk about it, if Valma wasn't exposed for the horrific thing that it actually is? Parents go along, see Valma, think, you know, I really liked Scooby-Doo when I was a kid. That's going to be something good that my kid can watch. You know, the mom's in the kitchen making dinner and the kid's sitting in front of the TV, getting all of those ideas, that bile, that poison, just absorbed straight into them and nobody knows any better because nobody decided to talk about it. Maybe that is why CBR is so desperate for people not to talk about the show, to show people how bad it really is. Because they want Valma to fade into obscurity so it can be consumed by the ignorant. Because there were alternative versions of Velma that came through in the concept art. Velma wasn't always the way it is now. We get this concept art where you see Fred here, who actually has testosterone for once. This concept art has more buff versions of the characters. But as Galloway alludes, the series did not end up going with his designs. Because instead of this strong, muscular, masculine Fred, instead what we ended up with was a guy who hasn't even gone through puberty and can't cut his own food. I don't know, which do you think would be the better role model? The current Fred or this dude? Because we do know CBR's opinion of it. Yes, we do have this version of masculinity here, but we also have their opinion on how Velma handles toxic masculinity. It does it really well. Velma tries to educate its characters on toxic masculinity. As opposed to what? Velma is just entirely toxic from start to finish. Who exactly do you think that the poisonous bile is actually correcting in their behavior? And CBR have been hammering this idea since the start of the series. Don't you understand how Velma solved the mystery of its most toxic male, who they claim is Shaggy? And this was done on the 22nd of January. But on the 20th of January, we had a different take as Velma fixes its most problematic character. This time it was Fred instead. They gave him the feminine mystique, which spoke about women being more than housewives and mothers. Don't you understand? You could work for a major corporation. Why do you want to be a mother and pass on your genetics to the next generation so the human species can survive? Why would you want to do that when you could work for a solar's corporation instead? Are you insane? <laughs> no, Velma is fixing all of the problems of the past. Don't you understand? Valma offers the best version of Shaggy. This is on January the 16th. Even though, remember, on January the 22nd, they said the most toxic male was Shaggy. Apparently a week earlier, this was the best version of him. I don't know if you can work out this weird switching narrative that they keep doing across all of their articles. It's almost as if we'll say whatever we need to in order to achieve the goal that we want. Because Valma's Shaggy represents maturity and growth. He's brave, but still vulnerable. And his vulnerability is not of the mind. What of the heart? He's a mentally healthy person in terms of balancing emotions. That's right, the reason why Shaggy is the best version of Shaggy. Because they have managed to handle his toxic masculinity by making him act like a woman. <laughs> he's just an emotional snowflake now, that means he's much better. I think I've proven that CBR just agrees with Velma. They think that this is the future. This is the solving the problems of the past. Taking characters and altering them, changing them, and putting them together in the package of Velma with the ideas that they think should go forth into the future. And they don't want people talking about it, so they don't want people to highlight exactly how horrific these ideas are, how horrific a show this is, what a horrible reality is actually created when you combine all of these ideas into one world. The world you get is Velma. That's why the criticism is so impactful. And yet CBR is on board with that. CBR want that to become reality. Why are they so desperate to show that Velma is a success? They're not trying to make out that Velma is a success because it'll make it profitable. It won't alter the bottom line in any way but it could make people shut up. It could allow Velma to go under the radar so it can keep spreading the message that they agree with. Because if sunlight is the best disinfectant, then there's nothing that CBR would want 
greater than darkness. Because they know that Valmer has fallen into the same trap as various other things. That people don't like them because they strayed too far from the character. That Valmer isn't actually Scooby-Doo at all. And they've been trying to go after Scooby-Doo for a long time because it was a kid show that actually meant something to other people. And a lot of parents don't watch the shows that their kids do. And so if you can get it in under the radar, if you can get people to consume something where they don't know what they're watching, if you can start telling people how the world should be before they have actually developed critical thinking skills, then it makes people a lot more gullible. It makes them far easier to convince. And once someone is convinced of something, if they didn't think their way into that position, then they can't think their way out of it either. Often ideas that people get when they're young are ideas that stick with them for the rest of their entire life. Because they just become de facto foundations which the rest of their opinions are built upon. And in a world where Velma didn't even receive pushback for the mature take that they did, even though these people are in high school, you have to ask why. Why was this show made? Why did it have the confidence to be so obviously mask off? And why is CBR so desperate to try and stop people talking about it? through any methods possible. But I tell you one thing, coming out with some kind of fake outrage of shame and humiliation isn't going to stop me from watching a show, because Velma is indeed hilarious, just for all of the wrong reasons. But those are my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Like the video if you liked the video. Subscribe for more videos like this in the future, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.